our, our friends for having me out here. Really excited about this topic. Um, I'm going to be talking about some cartilage treatment options for the medium to large cartilage defects. And then I want to talk about my algorithm and how I treat these. So this slide is going to probably bring you back to medical school a little bit, but it's really important. I think we're talking about cartilage. We got to get back to the basic science. And so if you remember that, you know, this is the gold standard here is the composition. We're looking at type two uh, collagen. The chondrocytes only make up two percent of articular cartilage, and it's just a very highly structured or organization of the extracellular matrix. So the cartilage is anal, it's avascular, we know that when we, when we lose it, it's gone, so we gotta find ways to restore it. If we can repair it, that's definitely an option, but I won't be talking about any repair options here. So this is really, the histology is, is very complex, the 3D model of it, um, the layers of it, it's very um, structured. So we have superficial, transitional, deep, and then the calcified layer, and then we go on to the subchondral bone, which I'm gonna talk about as part of my treatment algorithm. So when I'm looking at MRIs, this is really where I start, is I'm looking at the integrity of the subchondral plate or the subchondral bone. So we know it's immediately beneath that calcified cartilage layer, supports overlying cartilage and distributes mechanical loads across the joint. And again, major factor for me, whether I'm gonna to go to kind of a cell-based type restoration, which is autocart, which we had a nice presentation before, or I'm gonna to go to something like a osteochondral allograft. So I wanted to kind of pause on this slide, so I think that the, the algorithm is it's tricky, it's complex, I think it's patient specific. Um, you have to look at the patient as a whole, obviously their physiologic age, their BMI, their expectations, their profession, whether or not they're an athlete or not, um, what level of athlete. And then looking at tissue specific factors, factors. so part of the cartilage quality. So am I looking at just a simple kind of OCD lesion along the condyle? Am I looking at a full thickness cartilage where a uh, loss, where the subchondral plate is intact? Or am I just looking at some chondral malaysia uh, of maybe the patella or along the condyles? And then you want to look at the defect, defect specific factors. So I want to look at location. Obviously, condyles versus the patella femoral joint is going to be treated very differently. And then the size, and then are they in multiple locations, and whether or not it's contained versus uncontained. And it's really important that we make sure everything around the cartilage, I think the cartilage is the most important thing, but you know, we gotta make sure the ligaments uh, are stable. So um, I'm usually always doing some kind of ACL reconstruction or ligamentous reconstruction, meniscus repair, anything like that to help protect my cartilage repair. So again, this is like, the, what's really cool about cartilage and it's really frustrating is there's different patterns and we see them all the time. And, and um, you know, what's great is Arthur's has given us the tools to be able to handle almost any type of, of pattern. So we had a good talk about our partner in the previous presentation. I'm just gonna go through just a case. Um, I usually use AutoCart for my small to medium sized defects. They're contained lesions uh, and the subchondral bone is intact. Um, I really like AutoCart because there's a lot of times when you get, the MRI kind of holds us and a lot of times you get in there and uh, you're doing an ACL or meniscal repair, and then you see this big cartilage defect, and I think AutoCart is a perfect um, tool to be able to uh, treat those defects at the same time. When we're looking at cartilage tissue engineering, these are the real principles, right, is the, this trifecta. We need cells, we need regulatory signals, and we need the scaffold. And I think that Arthrex has done a great job um, doing that. So for the cells, we have the graph now where we can get our autologous chondrocytes. Uh, the regulatory signals are autologous fl fluids. And then the scaffold is the biocartilage. And so I think these principles are really leading us to some um, good treatment options down the road for these cartilage um, defects. So this is a case, 42 year old female, acute left knee injury after skiing, uh, after skiing accident. Uh, she had an ACL rupture and then she had this defect along the lateral femoral condyle. My plan is to get an ACL reconstruction on her with an autocart technique. Just wanted to briefly go through. So this is the graph net here. This is uh, this is basically my autologous chondrocytes that I get, and I can get quite a lot. And this is just barely kind of shaving. I usually take it off with lateral trochlea, and then I go ahead and just mix the biocartilage with, with my uh, fluid as well. And then these nice little mixtures. I usually have my tech doom, but sometimes I get particular if I need a certain amount of consistency or want it to be sticky or a little bit runny, then I'll go ahead and do it. So application, so again, all arthroscopic, which is great. So this is the defect here. 
Uh, I do microfracture. I've actually, uh, last year or so, I've gone away from microfracturing. It's not a must to do for this procedure. I take all the fluid out of it at the joint, and you can see my little spatula coming in there with the biocartilage um, with the autopart um, mixture. And then I put it in my defect along there and, and, and patch it in nicely. What I do like to do is I like to range the knee and kind of get it back into that fluid. And then I like to make sure that that is sticking on there. And so when I bring it back, it's sticking in. So I know that everything is good and it's going to heal nicely. So basically why I like auto part. So you can do arthroscopic or open. Uh, you can alter the consistency, so you can, again, make it really, I always say, hey, make it really thick for me because I like to paste it on there. Um, using the autologous chondrocytes, you can do the microfracture um, or not. I've kind of strayed away from doing uh, the microfracture, I'll just do kind of a light abrasion, just, but you want to make sure you get rid of that calcified cartilage layer. Again, single procedure, great instrumentation to be able to do this, and then I use autologous thrombin and work for my clot, and it's very inexpensive. So let's go to smaller defects, um, but now we have the subchondral bone that is uh, disrupted. So osteochondral autograft transplantation. This is a 19-year-old uh, college basketball player, tweaked her knee. Um, she actually was dealing with this for a little bit, and so she has a lateral femoral condyle defect measuring about 1.1 centimeters. And to me, when I look at this uh, sagittal view, basically I see there's some uh, modeling along the subchondral plate. So I know that the subchondral bone is in fact disrupted, or at least the vascular supply is disrupted. So usually in my athletes, um, if it's a size, if it's a not too big of a size defect, I'll, I prefer the oats. And so I get this open. Uh, you can do this arthroscopic. Uh, Arthrox has great uh, tech, or, um, cannulas and everything that you can do with arthroscopic, I just feel that you want to get the cartilage perfect. We know that if it's one millimeter proud or even one millimeter recess, that it can have effects on the graph. So this is her defect along that lateral femoral condyle. This is where this is why I took out that defect, or at least it's the majority that I could. I took the plug from her lateral trochlea, and these are basically the two plugs lined up against each other, just showing the disease and the new plug going in. I did backfill this, um, the plug with allosine pure. You can backfill it with another maybe smaller 10 millimeter osteochondrolograph if you want to. And then there's her, um, there's her uh, oats procedure. So autograph oats, when do I use these? Again, smaller defects that violation of the subchondral bone. Um, this still in the literature is the highest return sport for athletes. So if I can, and athletes, um, I think this is the best when you get them back between six to nine months. Again, arthroscopic or open, uh, usually the size I'm looking for, I will not go higher than um, 1.2 centimeters on this, and then I'll look, if I go higher than that, then the defect is, then I'll use an osteochondral allograft. Instrumentation, instrumentation is very easy. Um, kit includes everything, so all you have to say is, you know, I need a 10 millimeter, and the kit has everything for you. So very, very easy for your staff. And then if you want to do arthroscopic, there's a nice clear graft uh, delivery cannula that you can be able to see the orientation of your graft under the scope. All right, let's move on to cartiform. So cartiform is a cryopreserved osteochondral allograft. Pores uh, are there for flexibility. I love this because just in that the, uh, just in that couple of first slides that I show you, it really respects the those superficial transitional and deep layers and the calcified layer. So those are all organized in this little disc, and you have a subchondral bone layer underneath there as well. So it comes in multiple shapes and sizes, and you can trim it to any um, shape of your cartilage defects. So this is a 28-year-old male, active military. He had a, a pretty good defect along his trochlea, just central tro trochlea. So this is a trochlea here, again, with this open. Um, you're able to see that, basically debris the edges of the, of the defect to get a little bit of bleeding bone. It's very odd shape. Um, I usually use like a 10 millimeter cardiform disc. It's kind of my go-to. Uh, this is my technique that I use. Um, it's a great fixation. So I'll put a 1.8 millimeter fiber tack knotless right in the center, and that helps me to kind of suck down that cardiform. And then I'll use uh, two, four push locks on the periphery and just load a 4 bicroll or even a 5 bicroll and then I'll just tie those along the periphery. And then you just get really secure fixation, and I'm really confident with this fixation that I usually have them um, flat foot weight bearing in the first week or so. Their weight bearing is tolerated when they come see me in two weeks, so you can really get them moving 
So why I like the uh, powder form, so you can use it in any compartment. I'm using it more in my um, patellofemoral joints. Maintains that intact cartilage structure, so it's readily available. Um, again, if, you, if there is some bone loss, um, you still can use this because there is that subchondral layer of bone that's on the powder form. So um, I think that's a really uh, neat tool. Uh, so sizes, they come in all different sizes. I usually end up using the 10 millimeter um, circular disc, but um, I have gone up to the big rectangular size. Really flexible, be able to cut this and trim this in any way, secure fixation. So when I'm looking at these larger osteochondral uh, defects, obviously the subchondral bone is, is disrupted. Um, I have, we have some, algebra has some great techniques and I love them, and I use all of these um, a lot. So if the, the defect is large, 15 to 35 millimeters, then I'm going to go ahead with the allograft oaks. And if the defect is actually cylindrical, if it's more elliptical where it covers the whole condyle, then I go to my bio uni oats. And then there's these really cool uh, pre cut fresh osteochondral allograft uh, pores. So they come in 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 16 millimeter. I will say this is probably my most common procedure is using these plugs. So I'm just going to show you this case here. A uh, 55 year old male, he's a marathon runner. He had prior surgeries on the left knee, a lateral release, and the right side in a lateral release with microfracture along the lateral trochlea. Uh, really looking at his MRIs, he has like exact um, uh, copy defects on both tropleas. So he wanted to start with his right side, sorry, his left side. And so uh, this is just arthroscopically just kind of looking at this defect. It doesn't look too big or anything like that. And I caution, um, Folks, when, you, when, when you're looking at cartilage, it's still a lot bigger even when I look at it open here. And I encourage you to kind of uh, probe around the rim of these cartilage defects because what happens because that bone supply, uh, the vascularity of it is poor, it delaminates. So the, the actual defect is a lot larger than what we're seeing on the surface. So really get in there and probe it. And whatever it's really soft and spongy, then you want to make sure that you take that. So this is basically my reamer. I'm going to do a 16 millimeter plug put my guide pin and then my reamer over to that depth, and then there's my plug in there along that lateral trochlea, and the side view get great contour, it's nice and flush. So he, uh, he did really well on his left side, and so we did his right side, and so uh, he had that microfracture on the right side, you can see that fiber cartilage and arthroscopically, and the plug in the open part of the defect, and then that plug in there, and so he's done really, really well. And then I wanted to just show you just a, um, Kind of a simple OCD, 28 year old chronic OCD. This is one where you're just kind of salivating, like, oh, this is going to be great. So you get in there, you have this defect, this little flap. Um, basically, take that out, put a 16 millimeter plug in. Again, great contour with these um, plugs. So, why I like these pre cut plugs? So, my most common procedure, I can use them for primary or salvage. Uh, they have 10, 12, 16 millimeter plugs, so they're readily available. Instrumentation is easy. I just caution you to when you get the graph, make sure you look at the graph. You want to look at the slope of the graph, the depth of the graph um, before you put it in because you don't want to ream too deep and then, and then your plug's going to sink in there. Uh, I wanted to go through, um, so these are bigger defects, circular ones, the allograft oats here. So this is a 42 year old male. He had a prior OCD when he was a teenager and then he had a traumatic injury in his 40s. He had a large uh, lateral femoral condyle defect as you can see on the MRI there. And this is what that, when I got in there, this is what it looked like. And that defect is just kind of swimming around his knee underneath my bobe. There, that's that piece. Um, and that's the defect. And that's a huge part of his uh, condyle. I used the largest oats along there. and was able to get great press fit fixation and great contour. And he's doing great. I have him flat foot weight bearing. His weight bearing is tolerated right now. He's probably about four weeks out. And then when we look at these larger kind of uh, elliptical type uh, defects, so this male is 33 year old, chronic right knee pain. He had a prior bone graft a couple years prior to me seeing him. Uh, again, large uh, lateral femoral condyle defect, osteochondral defect. You can see in the MRI just looked like draws to a big bite out of that condyle. This is what it looked like open. He's able to do a nice bio-uni forum with crusted fixation. Here's eight months post-op, um, showing the graft well incorporated and able to get that curvature of that lateral thermal condyle. So again, by uni oats, uh, it's my go-to really for my large elliptical uh, type um, defects. Instrumentation is fantastic. They used to have those diamond pins that you put in the graft, and now they have this really nice station that really secures the, secures the graft so you can take it. So just like a quick summary of my algorithm. So again, I look at that subchondral bone. So if it's intact, 
Um, I'm looking at doing auto parts. Um, most of the time I do do it arthroscopically. Uh, and then if it's still intact, but there may be a larger defect, I'll do cartiform. Even if there's a little bit of bone loss, I'll still do cartiform. If uh, the subchondral bone is disrupted and it's a smaller defect, most of the time in my athletes, I'll do an OATS procedure. Uh, and then uh, if it gets a little bit bigger, so uh, one to one and a half centimeters, I'll use those pre-cut core plugs. Uh, and then the, if it's more cylindrical, a little bit bigger, I'll use the OATS and then the bio unit for the more elliptical ones. Thank you.